Okay, well, this is really the reason I came tonight so far, was to pay tribute to sweet, sweet Carla Hunderstar. Um, a lot of you don't know her. She wrote books with these titles, The Woman Who Was Wild, The Girl Who Struggled With Death. I don't know where, whether to laugh or cry, because I lost the map to where I was going, and The Naked Garden. She was a daughter, a mother, a grandmother, wife, lover, painter, novelist, teacher, publisher, children's author, storyteller, myth maker, refuge provider. She started a Butterfly Tree uh, in Marin County. Um, she was a poet and a companion of my heart for 35 years. But above all, Carla was a poet. Uh, and like most poets and artists, she did not get the recognition she deserved. That eight-word mantra that we all hear far too much in our lives. Uh, she did get the Josephine Miles National Book Award from Penn uh, in 2007 for a book called The Diary of a Poet. Uh, writing was her life. Um, she was deeply, deeply committed to the power of poetry to heal and transform. And what she wrote about most was love, capital L-O-V-E, not being in love, but love as the great healer no matter where you were on that turning wheel of love, whether it was grace and beauty or pain and anguish, she did believe in love. And those who knew her and her poetry loved both for the message she brought to the world. This is, uh, this is one of her last poems. It was published in Diary of a Poet. <clears throat> love is long and lasts past marriage and affairs. It lives on the lips of poetry and song. It stays through sorrow, war, and harm. Love's long arms surround the shoulders of the broken and unarmed. It's found in unexpected hearts and warm generosity and grateful words. It never needs to chase, make haste, or waste the mind. It is the pulse of a universal rhythmic pace that leads with grace and dances with a joyful face. It is in tune in sync with simultaneity. It does not break the multiplicity of magic, synchronicity, or faith. It relishes in knowing the unknown. It is a way of going home to trace a simple celebration with two or three of us who waltz behind the blue moon's countenance and smile at paradox, at what is right or wrong. Once love is love, it is. You cannot make it die or disappear. Beautiful poet. Carmen. I first met her back in or 1976 at a summer writing workshop at the Central Foundation in Fort Townsend, Washington. We were there as teachers, well, I guess you would call us assistant teachers because the heavy hitters that year were Denise Levertov, uh, Philip Whalen, and Gary Snyder. But we did work together for two weeks with stories and poems, and uh, it went so well that we continued it for many, many years throughout Northern California and schools, conferences, community centers. Uh, the last time I saw Carla was a day or two before she died, which was on May 23rd, 2011. She was 73 years old. My wife Sarah and I went to visit her. She was dying of cancer that had wasted her body. Uh, she was living in a tiny cabin behind a butterfly tree at New Beach. The cabin was just about empty of all possessions. She had given everything away. She was more absent than present, really. Uh, we fed her spoonful by spoonful minestrone soup. Minestrone soup. Uh, she didn't take very much. And then my wife Sarah left to give Carl and I some time together. The door was opened. It was springtime. We sat there quietly looking at all the wildflowers 
through the door, mainly wild onions and uh, the multiplicity of birds in the trees. We spoke a little of old friends. Uh, and then she said, Steve, would you read me a poem? And I was prepared to do that. I, that's what I came to do, was to recall some of her own poetry. And uh, this is uh, one of the poems I read to her. It's called When. When I am gone and you are left to remember, begin with the songs I loved, the poems I wrote. Be silent for a while and listen to the birds. They will remind you of my teachers. They will inform you of my passage. For I will be gone to another place, yet I am still here for you when you claim I me again in memory. If you take time to discover the meaning of the conversation of the birds, the drifting of plum blossoms early in the spring, you will not lose yourself or the way of a poem. The way of a poem. It is not always dreary, not always sad. Rather, it is lively and laughing, alert to opposites and ironies, to the puzzlement of the human ways of asking, is it true? It keeps me capable of loving you again. If you remember me and read my poems. <laughs> That's one of the poems I read to her. And then we were silent for a while. We embraced through tears. And I left uh, without a word of parting. Um, a day or two later, her son Scott Billings, who was here with us this evening, called me to tell me that Carl was gone. Gyate, gyate, haraso gyate. Gone, gone, gone beyond. And that night I wrote a short elegy for her. And it just goes like this. Carla, you ask me who will read my poems when I'm gone. I will, sweet Carla. I will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.